I did a little bit of research, uh, you know, before, you know, you know, approaching you and all that stuff. One of very few people whom I have met uh, in an in a Indian tech scenario per se, who have seen fundamentally everything what has happened in a tech uh, domain. So educate us, you know, uh, you know, share with us, you know, how your journey started from the engineering perspective and from the management perspective. And then when India was just on the verge of, you know, information technology, how you basically led that. And then as a president of, uh, you know, NASCOM, the whole community and the whole industry was almost doubled during your tenure from $62 billion to, you know, $108, $110 billion. I was fortunate uh, that opportunities came as they came. By the way, nothing was planned. Nothing is planned, right? Life comes as it does. Uh, way back in the uh, 60s, there were only a couple of choices. You would take medicine or become an engineer or join IAS. Even CA, etc., were not. So there were very few professionals that were around. And uh, I think one was fortunate that I uh, got into uh, Kanpur. I'm not sure any of these institutions I can make it now. There was a lot of energy at that time. There were really small batches. And I think one had a real good time. And one owes quite a lot, not only to what happened in the classroom, but also outside it. In fact, uh, I think all these young people are really, really fortunate that there are so many new opportunities. And there were fewer jobs. Uh, but I was uh, lucky that I got to work uh, uh, initially in the engineering industry. You know, we were fortunate to have worked in finance and manufacturing and design and sales and marketing. So we had a chance to get rounded off. Uh, today you get into a very hyper specialized areas and you don't get opportunities. I joined the tech sector in 89 and I think Wipro gave me that grounding and then went uh, to a multinational. Digital was, by the way, the first multinational to have come back to India after IBM left in 78, wow. right? So this was a new multinational. We were listed on the Indian Stock Exchange. And I had an opportunity uh, because, you know, we were going through some issues financially to turn it around. And, and Digital was a strong tech company. Yes. And I think we did that. Uh, we paid up our dividends. And soon after that, uh, when we were just rocking here, uh, globally compact bought out digital mm. and uh, I think uh, life is interesting because uh, you got a chance to see how uh, what the intent is how these mergers happen mm. uh, what uh, what you tell people is not what they want to hear mm. right and and you know we as management always want to tell them our story mm. but they have different concerns about their careers and life mm. uh, so it was it was an interesting navigation to do uh, uh, you know, I, I personally believe that leadership is not required uh, in uh, steady state, mm. right? The leadership is always required when there is crisis, where everybody looks up to you for guidance. Mm. And I think that's where all your faculties get this. Otherwise, you're riding a wave, yes. right? And uh, you, know, you could be called a leader, but your real leadership is challenged uh, to its core. Uh, and that's the opportunity. Mm. Uh, so we got, uh, you know, we became one organization, very different cultures, both from the origins of these organizations mm. and what they stood for, mm. right? And getting them to marry, you know, people will always say one plus one is not 11, it's 13, mm. et cetera, et cetera. But, mm. you know, the reality on the ground is different. Mm. You know, I decided that rather than just work on the hardware side, which I'd done for a long mm. time, uh, to, to venture out to see if we could do something in services. And since we had a listed entity, mm. I uh, took charge of the listed entity and it was a very interesting move uh, that was just me as the managing director of the company and 200 very bright engineers. Mm. I would say probably all through my career, right, uh, where you were given free chance and you were able to create ground field stuff and, mm. and you were able to also build institutions. Mm. Uh, we actually grew within four years time to about 6,000, mm. which was a pretty good growth rate today. Of course, the numbers are all very different. Mm. While all this was going on, uh, HP decided to buy out Compaq. Yes. So we moved from a, a, a Massachusetts, Boston culture to a, a Compaq, Houston, Texan, cowboy culture yeah. to now getting into Palo Alto. Uh, it was quite interesting because everyone had their uh, nuances and you were both seeing it from inside and outside, which is a, you know, not too many times you get a perspective. I was inside because uh, HP owned us now 51%, mm. and I was outside because we were a listed entity. Mm. And uh, as a listed entity, you had 
responsibility not only to HP, but also to other shareholders. Mm. We've been through all the cycles of uh, uh, whether it was client server or the ERP is coming in. And at each time, the question that was asked was, uh, now that it is ERP, what happens to you, right? Because you were in apps. Mm. And if it's client server, what happens to you? Yeah. So we have to navigate these waves rather than resist them ride the waves, jump onto the next wave and jump on. And I think that's what happened. I'm, I'm by the way, a metallurgical engineer by, uh, by education, right? And today I uh, had the opportunity to lead tech companies and later on uh, NASCOM. And I used to be uh, quite active uh, in associations, uh, including being the chairman of NASCOM in 2002, 2003 timeframe. Uh, and then uh, came a point in life where you know, one said that, look, I've done enough corporate work and NASCOM was looking for a leader to lead this. And I, I thought about it and I said, uh, you know, how long do you want to do uh, this normal commercial stuff? And mm. this was an opportunity. And again, as I said, you know, I see youngsters uh, actually trying to plan their careers rather uh, as if it was all a uh, programmed stuff, it doesn't go that way, mm. right? My advice would be that when an opportunity comes, uh, take it mm. ra rather than it's a risk. Every one of that is a risk. Mm. And that risk is also entrepreneurial, right? India had established itself mm. quite uh, very much. This is not about jobs, it's not about cost. Mm. Yeah, our, everybody would like it cheaper, better, faster, mm. but it was also about resources that were available and the world was short of them. Mm. And I think that's what we did. So if I look back, uh, I think there is uh, immense sat satisfaction, not about the success, but the fact that you had an opportunity to influence a number of people, make some impact as you went on the way, and uh, be, have been a part of a success story of the country.